you ever think about our love? And so God, even right now, as we prepare to go into the next holy time, Father God, Lord, hallelujah, of this service of opening up the holy rift, we pray, Father God, that you saturate, hallelujah, some of this element with the blood of Jesus. Even now, God, in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, that you arrest anything that's not like you. Any distraction, any distraction. Hallelujah. Right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We pray, Father God, that every darkness God will be transformed into light. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus. We bless you, Father God. Hallelujah. As we, Father God, partake through this first Sunday service into this edifice. Hallelujah. We pray, Father God, that you, Father God, will have full control. Hallelujah, Father God, of this building. We dedicate this building to you, God. Even right now, God. Every word, hallelujah, will be said in this building, God, and that's up to you. Every song that will be sung in this building is as unto you. Hallelujah. Every dance that will be danced in this building and has been danced in this building is as unto you. Receive it all. Hallelujah, God. For your honor and for your glory, even now, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we pray, Father God, that the four corners of this church, of this whole building, this whole edifice, hallelujah, Father God, that will be, Father God, guarded hallelujah, by mighty warring angels. Hallelujah. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we come against any black man. We come against any voodoo. Against any opia. Against any voodoo. Any South Korea. Any Hoover. We bind it now in the name of Jesus. And we send it back to center. We bind it to the center. Give the blood of Jesus. Any demonic covenant made in this building, we break it. We cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. Loose this atmosphere, Father God. To the glory. Hallelujah, Father God. So that you can get all the glory. So that the word is increased with ease, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. So that praise you go forth uh, with no obstruction. So we can worship you. So we can enter in. Hallelujah, Father God. Be the most holy in the holy. Even now, God, in Jesus' name. We thank you. For this resurrection Sunday. It's not just by you. And Father God, even now, hallelujah, Father God. If there's anything in us that's not like you, hallelujah, Father God. We ask you to search our hearts and remove this from us. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. And thine is the glory. Forever and ever. So, God, we bless you. Touch these lips of clay. May they only say what you would have me to say. Even now, in Jesus' white name, we pray. So, we say amen. Let the church say amen. amen. One more time from the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. Glory to God. And the church goes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what? This altar is literally the one I'm used to using. Glory to God. I think I'm just going to go with the uh, with the tablet today. Right. Hallelujah. But if you have your Bibles, glory to God. I want you just to lift it in the air with me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. If you have your Bible, I want you just to lift them in the air with me. Yes, Glory to God. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. There are many like it. This one is mine. I will read it to see what it says. I will study it to show myself approved. It's a lamp to my feet. It's a light to my path. And because of it, I am blessed. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. If you can turn it on the Holy Bible to the book of John. John chapter 13. Glory to God. John chapter 13. John chapter 13. Glory to God. So when you get there, just say, I have arrived. I have arrived. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to work it out this morning. John chapter 13. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We get to this I have arrived. I have arrived. And I'm going to start reading. This is funny. Glory to God. I'm going to start reading. Glory to God for the sake of time. Glory to God. Amen. It says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, 
having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them until the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he was come from God and went to God, he rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then come and peek to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, must thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Somebody say hereafter. Hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Yes. And Jesus said to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and what was and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye that what I have done to you? You call me master and lord, and say ye say ye, and ye say well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Glory to God. And verily I, verily I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth bread with, with me have lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, you may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth them that sent me. And when Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in his spirit, and testified and said, verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, Doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to them that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then lying on Jesus' breast, saying unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sock, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest do quickly. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. I read a lot of scriptures in your hearing, but I read it so I don't have to go back and read it again. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to read four more scriptures in your hearing, which comes from Matthew chapter 27. You can turn or not. It's okay. Matthew 27, verses 50 to 54. And it says, And Jesus cried out again. With a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake, and the things that had happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly this was the Son of God. May God have a blessing to believe in this word. Amen. Glory to God. I read both of those. That way I don't have to go back and read it again. Glory to God. It is Resurrection Sunday. And I believe we all know generally the story. It's a comment I believe upon every preacher, amen, on this particular Sunday to give the resurrection message, amen, and I will do that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, what I understand is, I believe it is tragic. Uh, how tragic it is, let me say it is, that people have forgotten him, have forgotten what Jesus has done over 2,000 years ago, amen? Especially in developed nations, especially in nations such as America, all right? Western culture, Europe, and people that really have a lot of things, all right? A lot of blessings. We have forgotten, glory to God, amen? 
what Jesus has done. We have forgotten what God has done for us. Anybody here with me this morning? Amen. We want to talk about Jesus today, amen, and I praise God, amen, for the opportunity to talk about, amen, the resurrection, glory to God, hallelujah, because Jesus Christ had, or has, had the most influence on everything in the world more than anybody else that has ever lived, Amen. anybody else, all right, and that's why we want to talk to you about Jesus, the most unique, the greatest man that has ever lived. Amen. We are living in 2021 because 2020 years ago, 21 years ago, there was a man named Jesus. Yes. All right. All right. He came, glory to God, he was born of a virgin, praise God, and he came into the world. And how do you know that his life was so great that they had to change time? Anybody here with me today? Mm-hmm. When people tell me that they don't believe in Jesus and all that, I say, well, what's the date? Glory to God. And they say, whatever date. I say, okay, so you're telling me you believe in Jesus. What do you mean? Because whatever date you say, you are giving praise, glory to God, you're giving honor, you are exemplifying that. And whatever date you're saying, 2,000 and something years ago, there was a man named Jesus. Anybody who yeah. there? Amen. He was so, he is so awesome that they had to mark the time that he came to earth until the time when he's coming back again. Yeah. All right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. And that's why we say Arnold Downey, 2021 Arnold Downey, after death, all right? BC means before Christ. Glory to God. But Jesus Christ, he has had and he has influence on time. He has influence on world history. Glory to God. He's the most talked about man in the world. Glory to God. Hallelujah. His book is the, is the, is the greatest selling book ever. Amen. The Bible, the word of God. Praise God. He has had influence on helping the poor. It was Jesus teaching why we have all these charitable organizations and missionaries and all of that. There was no other teachings, all right, that taught that. There was Jesus teachings. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. Helping the poor, education, the founding of America, civil liberties, science, economics, health, medicine, morality, the arts, music, all of that was widely influenced by the teachings of Jesus. A lot of people don't know that the most earliest colleges and universities were actually religious institutions. Yale, Duke, all of these, what we call Ivy League, they were started off as basically like seminaries. Bible schools and things like that, and they turn into what we know as, you know, some of our, our highest um, secular, so to speak, um, institutions. All right, Temple University, which I went to, where we got started off as a church, as a religious institution. Glory to God. All right, and so why this is because of the life of Jesus. Anybody here with me today? And I just give y'all a little background. Glory to God. And then as we go into the story today, why? Because he was unique. All right, and I say was, but of course we know he lived. So I'm gonna say he is unique. Praise God, all right? The uniqueness of this person, all right, is one of the reasons why, praise God, they had to change time. They had to mark time, all right? Uh, uh, as, I, as I mentioned already, praise God, you know, we need to understand that Jesus was not only human, but he also was divine. Praise God. He was born of a virgin, glory to God, but his father was not an earthly father. His father was God, glory to God. So he was not, people say he was half man and half God, and that's not true. He was 100% man, and he was 100% God. Yes, amen. Yes. Glory to God. All right? There was two natures united in one person. All right? And the Bible makes the claim that Jesus Christ is both God and man. Yes. All right? In John 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Nothing was created without God. If you skip down later in that chapter, it says, And the Word was manifested in the flesh. Yes. You know what we're talking about? Jesus. We're talking about Jesus. Glory to God. Colossians 1, 16 says, for all things in heaven and on earth were created in him. All things, whether visible or invisible, whether thrones or dominions, whether principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. Praise the Lord. We're talking about Jesus. All right. So as man, he was sinless and came as the sinless substitute to die for mankind's sin. But the declaration of scripture and the evidence of his life affirms that he was not half man and half God, but he's totally man and totally God united in one person. And do you know that there are over 400 Old Testament prophecies concerning Jesus Christ? 400. All right, I, I, I like to give this backdrop because, you know, people have a lot to say about church and Christianity and all of that. All right, but the, do we have more evidence for God, for Jesus, than we have evidence against him? Amen. Please hear me. Go to God. 400 Old Testament prophecies concerning one man. Glory to God. And guess what? Uh, uh, Jesus Christ perfectly fulfilled each and every single one of them. 
and every single one of them. That's why we're not still waiting on the Messiah. Let me know the Messiah has already come. Yeah, yeah. He's here this morning. When you talk to an Orthodox Jew, listen, you need to know yourself that you can talk to him say, we ain't waiting for Messiah, Yeshua, amen, you're meant to come because he's already come. Because there's no other, there's no other time in history when Jesus could have came and fulfilled every prophecy that was wrote, written concerning him. Please hear me. Do you know what the odds of that happening is? All right, of, of one person coming and fulfilling 400 prophecies? Glory to God. Uh, um, think about it. One single man fulfilling every prediction about the coming Messiah, Savior of the world. Uh, a professor named Peter Stoner worked with 600 students to figure out what the probability would be of just eight of the 400 prophecies being fulfilled in the life of one person. All right, and the result was 100 zillion, gazillion, whatever. All right, one in 100 gazillion. All right, that's how the probability of just eight. So imagine what the probability of 400 prophecies being fulfilled in the life of one person. All right, this is for people that say you're silly for going to church. This is the people for say that. This is for people that say you're silly for believing in Christianity and Jesus. All right, listen, you have evidence. All right, to explain to them, glory to God. All right, this is not for just the ignorant person. All right, praise God. He is God's indescribable and unfathomable gift yeah. to the world. He's the most unique person in the universe. No other religious leader has ever seriously made such a claim, for no one can support it by their life. Hmm. So we have the uniqueness of his person, then we have the uniqueness of his death. His death is also unique. Not because he was crucified, but because it was prophesied before it happened. Yes, All right. It was prophesied in Psalms 22, which I'm not going to take the time to read for you today. But in Psalms 22, it perfectly demonstrates, all right, the coming Messiah and the things that he was going to go through on the cross. Yes, that he was going to be thirsty. That yes. they were going to give him vinegar. That, you know, all of these different things. Growing up, it was prophesied. Oh, yeah, hear with me this morning. Yes, Glory to God. Everything that happened concerning Jesus. Yes, Glory to God. All right, not only in Psalm 22, but we just want to take that one, all right? Long before death by crucifixion was even known, it was prophesied that Jesus was going to come and die. Not only die, but die by crucifixion. All right. Isn't that amazing? This, this message might be more of a teaching than a preaching. We want to see how the Holy Spirit works. It. But isn't that amazing? It's amazing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, that. It was prophesied that a person was going to be nailed to a cross and all that before he even did it. Before crucifixion was even introduced into the world. Hundreds of years before it was caused. But Isaiah prophesied 700 years before that that he was wounded for our, you know, and he was bruised for our iniquities. And, you know, he prophesied 700 years ago before that. Glory to God. Before Jesus even came, before crucifixion was even introduced into the earth. My God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And third, because of the miracles surrounding his death, the darkness, the earthquake, the opening of the graves, uh, and then after seeing the cross, uh, Christ on the cross and the events of that day, the Roman centurion who had seen hundreds dying on the cross said, truly this was the Son of God. My God. Glory to God. Jesus was unique in his person. He was unique in his death. Again, crucifixion wasn't developed until a little bit before Jesus' life, and then it was discontinued shortly after. So if you're speaking to an Orthodox Jew, you want to say, who are you waiting for? Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Who are you waiting for? All right? Messianic Jews, they believe just like us, glory to God. And then they're basically Christians. Glory the Orthodox Jews are still waiting for the coming Messiah. Right. You want to say, who are you waiting for? Because the system is not here. All right? For the prophecies to be fulfilled. Come on. It's just common sense. I talk to a lot of them, so I know what I'm talking about. Glory yeah. to God. Yeah. You have to know how to get through to them. Glory to God. Uh, he, Jesus Christ could have only come at that time. Right. My God. Come on. Somebody needs to tell this to someone who's still waiting for Jesus. Somebody needs to tell, glory to God, to somebody who's still waiting for Jesus that we don't need mangers anymore. Amen. Somebody needs to tell somebody who's still Amen. waiting for Jesus, glory to God, that no one is setting up crosses anymore. Amen. Somebody needs to tell somebody who is still waiting. Glory to God, but Jesus, yes, glory to God, God. everything that it was prophesied, people don't, don't, don't ride on donkeys anymore. Glory to God, I can go down the line and down the line and down the line. People don't do the stuff that we read about from Jesus anymore. Somebody need to tell somebody that it's not going to happen because it has already happened. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Over 2,000 years ago. Don't be deceived. The Bible says the, the, the enemy comes to steal, kill, kill and destroy. destroy. Yes. And if he can deceive you, glory to God, then he is one. So you won't believe in 
the true Messiah. Glory to God. Yeah, I like what the Bible says, but I don't know all that deep in Jesus, though. That means you're rejecting him. Right. And you can't have the Father if you reject his son. All right. Glory to God. Glory to God. So we have the uniqueness of his person. We have the uniqueness of his death. And then we have the uniqueness of his resurrection. Other religious and philosophical leaders have come and they have gone. They've risen and they've fallen. Are you here with me this morning? But guess what? None of them have come back from the dead. Yes. Yes. Anybody know of one? Who yes. didn't do it? Muhammad didn't do it. Glory to God. Harry Krishna didn't do it. Glory to God. I don't know of no one else that has come back from the dead except for, what's his name? Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And right, this too is unique. Not only because Jesus Christ stands alone in this respect, but because of the Old Testament pr prediction and interconvertible evidence for the historical fact of the resurrection, which was the empty tomb. All right. And I say was, but it is because the tomb is still empty to the dead. Yes, Lord. If you go over to Jerusalem right now, look at that tomb, you ain't going to see Jesus. Right. You ain't going to see anybody because his body has been risen from the dead. Somebody should have said amen right there. Yes, Lord. Amen. But then we have his post-resurrection appearances, which I'm going to get into a little bit later. But people seen him after they raised, he got raised from the dead. It wasn't like someone said, oh, yeah, he raised from the dead. That's what I'm saying. No, he stuck around for 40 days. Right. And 40 nights. Preaching and talking and eating and fish, walking through walls and all of this kind of stuff. Anybody here with me today? Yeah. This is for anybody that's in here watching in TV land. Glory to God, you're not sure about your faith. You ain't gonna be, you ain't gonna be questioning your faith after you Amen. keep this yeah. to this. Praise yeah, God. Lord. Hallelujah. He is unique. Yeah, God. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. All right. Hallelujah. All right. So, so um, then we have the transformed lives of his disciples. We see that they transformed everything that they did. They were scared after he died. They were hiding, but something must have happened because they came back and started preaching again. All right. Not only were they preaching, but they gave up their lifestyle and they preached to the devil. Hallelujah. Eleven of them did. Glory to God. They became martyrs for what they believed in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. So the fact is, men reject Jesus Christ. His birth, they reject his birth, they reject miracles, and they reject his resurrection, but it's not because of the lack of evidence. But it's because they have never really researched the evidence with an open mind. Amen. Praise God. And number two, they don't want to submit to his authority and his claim. A lot of times people don't want to hear about the Bible and church and all that because they don't want nobody to tell them that, they, that they're wrong. Uh, yes. Glory to God. If you're sitting and I've been there, praise God. Glory to God. I'm not judging anybody. I've been there. Praise God. You don't want nobody to tell you that you ain't supposed to be shacking up. You don't want nobody to tell you that you ain't supposed to be getting drunk. Uh -huh. You don't want nobody to tell you you ain't supposed to be getting high no more. You don't want nobody to tell you these things, Lord God. And so if you don't want nobody to tell you, you want to say, well, you don't got to go to church to be saved. You don't got to do all of that. That's what you want to say. Lord God. Lord God. But when you get yourself together and you clean yourself up, you understand that the Bible says, forsake not the assembly of ourselves. That we supposed to come together. That God honors the fellowship of his son and his daughter together. Hallelujah. I read to you earlier from Matthew 27 showing that other people were raised from the dead. This is more evidence. Not only did Jesus resurrect, but he brought back other people with him. I read it earlier. I'm going to read it again. You want to take some of my people reading the scriptures. But go back to Matthew 27. People don't talk about I said, why don't people preach this? The Bible says, glory to God, that there were others that was from that time that walked the earth with Jesus. He didn't want nobody to be confused about what was really happening. Yeah. Why did he change? Did they change time with this man? Listen to the evidence. Mm. Think about it. If your mama had died during that time, mama came back. Great mama, yeah. grandmama, whoever, great granddad, whatever, they came back and they were walking the earth with their family with Jesus. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine? Not only the Messiah, not only the Son of God, not only the man of God, but others, glory to God, came and was walking yes, the earth. Yes, Lord. What about a testimony? Listen, some people learn, we can learn by listening, but how do you know some of us is visible? Amen. And I believe that's why Jesus did that. Uh -huh. 
He said, listen, I'm going to hit you from every angle. Yeah. Well, nigga, yeah. you ain't going to have no reason. Why? Because there had to be a spark that was so, so, that was lit, that was so lit, so, so lit. Praise God. That we're still here today over 2,000 years ago. Still Hallelujah. Talking. Yes, Lord. Amen. To change our perspective, he came so that we would become new. Yeah. Yes, Lord. A lot of times I can tell when a person is religious and say, Oh, I'm a better person. Oh, you know, and I'm better now. Listen, Jesus didn't come to make you better, he came to make you new. Behold, all things have passed away, and all things have become new. He wants you to forget about. Praise God. The old is start walking in the door. Everybody hear what they did? Hallelujah. Praise God. The reason why you keep failing. The reason why you keep going being taught the road is because you're trying to hold on to your old habits. You're trying to hold on to your old habits. The old you. Yeah, I know it made you feel good, but God said, get rid of it. Uh, I'm looking at the wall. I ain't looking at nobody. He said, get rid of it. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Listen, I, I can preach to others because he had to do it to me. Yes. You gotta get rid of it. You can't walk into the newness of, of God when you're still holding on to the, the yes. things of the, of the world. What is the profit of man to gain the whole world? Lose his soul. soul. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how what kind of car you drive. I don't care how fine you look. Or I don't care how tall you. I don't care about none of that. What is the profit of man or woman to gain the whole world? But lose their soul. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus says in 21 5, Behold, I make all yes, things new. Yes, Praise God. Behold is the word adu in Greek. I D O U. Adu in the Greek. Which means look well. It means look closely. Examine carefully. All right. All right. When he's saying, Behold, he's saying, I want you to look at this carefully. Like the people say, Watch this. He's saying, Watch this. Yes, all right. I make all things new. Yes, That's why you want to follow Jesus. This life is temporary. You only want to live to be 70, 80, maybe a little bit longer by way of strength. Glory to God. And then we got to transition. Uh, yes. Glory to God. So make the best, make the best decisions now. Yeah. Glory to God. Choose God now. Money. You don't choose now. You can't choose them later. You only get one shot. You only get one shot. People say, oh, I'm going to get old. Well, how old is old? Tell me, wait, I'm 25. All right, you turn 25, you still do it the same way. Oh, child, I got time for which I'm 30. Oh, for which I'm 40. Now, some of us, we about to hit 50 or we are 50. Then what about the 60s? And then the 70s? Then the 80s? Come on. How long you want to wait? And guess what? God knows your heart. He knows if you're genuine or not. Some people, they act like they come to the Lord. If they really have it, it's just that they can't do what they used to do anymore. I can't yes. smoke the doctor and say I can't drink no more because uh -huh. my blood pressure is. <laughs> So that's why they stopped. They finally stopped drinking that that, that liquor, right? Oh, I can't smoke no more because um, I had a surgery. Uh, yeah, I've been telling you that twenty years ago. It's yes, good. Lord. Praise God. Yes. Glory to God. Praise God. But God wants you to come now. Yes, God. He wants you to come now. Guess what? He knows if you're genuine or not. Yes. Many people will stand before him and say, "Depart from me. I never knew you." All right. Please don't let that be you. Oh my God. God sees your heart. Yes. He didn't just come to change our perspective. He came so that we could become new. Jesus says in Revelations, hallelujah, he came to make things new. All right? So everything that Jesus Christ touched was utterly transformed. All right? Praise God. He touched time when he was born into this world. He had a birthday, and that birthday utterly, utterly changed the way that we measure time. I got to keep saying that because sometimes it goes to God. Amen? And, and, and so guess what? The resurrection is the, is the crux of our belief, isn't it? Yeah. If he didn't raise... If he did not rise again, how many know he wasn't the Messiah? Yes. All right. Yes, Lord. Even if he did 399 of those prophecies, if he didn't do that 400 one, raised from the dead, that means we're still waiting for the Messiah. All right. Amen. Amen. So that's why this is the most holy day. Jesus. And praise God, he was born of a virgin, but if he didn't live a sinless life, Jesus. if he didn't do everything that was prophesied about him and die right, and give his life as a ransom for all, all of us and, and fulfill everything. And then, like he said on the cross, it is finished. Yes. He had the last long enough so that everything, praise God, and then that they said about him would be fulfilled. He did. Yeah, if he didn't do that, we would still be waiting. Amen. Uh, 
some of y'all been through. Some of y'all gonna get on the way home. First Corinthians 15, 14 says, and if Christ be not risen, then I then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also in vain. This is the apostle Paul writing to the church of Corinth. So as we consider the uniqueness of Christ, we also need to recognize the uniqueness of uh unique demands of, of our allegiance and commitment as believers. Glory to God. It demands that we rearrange our priorities and stand as luminaries in the dark and dismal world, holding forth the message of the unique Jesus Christ. The God, the Savior of the whole world. Jesus himself sought to impress this mindset on his disciples when he said, You are the salt of the earth. Yes, Lord. You are the light of the world. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, in the person of Jesus Christ, we have one so unique. That his life cannot be explained by natural process. His person and life defy the natural. The uniqueness of Jesus Christ presents evidence with the man's verdict that this man is not only unique, but that he is, in fact, the Savior of the whole world. On Jesus' way to the cross, he threw a dinner party. That was the first set of scriptures I read to you, which we normally call the Last Supper. And he reiterated his assignment. Which his disciples totally missed. Glory to God, like we said in community today. But he also used this opportunity to identify and let everyone know that he is that he already had knowledge of his betrayal. Yes. He also uses this opportunity to address his betrayal. Glory to God. Praise God. And so I believe that everything that he did on the cross was he was was a teaching method. He was teaching us. How do you know that you have to identify your Judas? Amen. If you want to be successful, praise God. You know, this one. I, I, I used to teach people when you pray, you need to ask to the prayer, God, show me my Judas. Praise God. Because we all say, God, bless me. God, send people who will bless me. Send people who will give me money. Send people who will push me. But you also need to pray, God, show me my Judas. Because if you don't know who your Judas is, I don't care how gifted you are, how talented you are, how anointed you think you are, that Judas can shorten your ministry. Yes, Matter of fact, that Judas, just like it did with Jesus, can shorten your life. Anybody hear what I'm saying today? Amen. Listen, Jesus used the Last Supper to identify his Judas. Turn your name and say, you need to know how to identify your Judas. Glory to God. Not everybody who is saying it for you is for you. Anybody here with me today? Amen. It's all right to say amen to this one. It's okay. Amen. So we got anybody here. Listen, we all have, we know, listen, we have friends, but we also have what we call frenemies. Yes. yes. You're my friend on Sunday, but on Monday, it's like, we're not friends anymore. Mm. Go ahead. On one day, I can hug you, hey, what's going on? And the next day, it's like, uh, hey, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up Pastor? Are you my friend or are you my enemy? One day, I can call you, amen. Next day, I'll call you, I won't, I won't talk to you for 20 days. You understand what I'm saying? Are we friends or are we frenemies? Glory to God. And then you talk well of me, well, well of me while I'm around you. As soon as I'm not around you, somebody says something negative, you join me with a conversation. Uh, I know it's just me, all right. Wait, it's just me. But not only did Jesus identify Judas, he addressed them. Yeah. And some of us, glory to God, is not getting to the next season of our purpose of God because we're not addressing them. Yeah, right. Stop being scared of those who don't like you. Stop being scared of those mm. who you know who won't betray you. Glory, glory, glory. Jesus was gangster. You know what yes, Lord Jesus God. Was Jesus wasn't no whip. Yes. Glory to God. Like, uh, if, you, if he was the whip, he would have been like, oh, I know somebody here won't betray you, but I ain't going to say nothing, though. Uh -huh. Jesus didn't do that. The Bible says it troubled him. He's sitting here like, I can't believe this, man, bro. I can't, I can't believe that. He was upset. And, and that's them. He said, you know what? I got to say this. I can't keep my mouth. Glory to God. Somebody in here is going to betray me. Jesus. Imagine that. He brought them in there for a holy last supper. Glory to God. And he used the time to identify this Judas. All right. We're going to get to the cross on that. But please don't miss, amen, his route. You got to learn those who are for you, those who are against you. Yeah, Lord. I told y'all last week. Glory to God, that, that listen, that God still fed Judas. He still gave him all of that. He said, and then they looked around, and I'm like, who is he? I know he ain't talking about me. Jesus, who is it, Jesus? And they said that, that John, the one he loved was John, who was leaning on his bosom. They said, ask Jesus who it is. And John said, who is it, Jesus? Who is it, Rabbi Rabboni? Who is it, Yeshua? 
God. He says, it's the one that I give the salt to. After he dipped it in the salt, he says, the one that I'm going to give it to. Mm. And he dipped it in, and he gave it to Judas. Right. Jesus was gangster. Yeah. You know what, John? You want to know? Here we go. Right here. Not only do you identify your, your, your Judas, but you need to learn how to address them. Yeah. I know you don't like me. Glory to God. Pray to God, but God bless you anyway. He goes to the side. And then he said, go ahead, Judas. Go do what you want to do. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people talk to me. I say, you need to read the word. I'm, I'm, I'm acting just like Jesus acted. Mm -hmm. I'm going to identify you, and then I'm going to tell you where you can go. Yeah, sure. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yeah, some of y'all going to get that on your way home. Yeah, right Glory to God. I'm going to give you directions. Go ahead and do what you want to do, sweetheart. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be all right. Yeah. I'll still be here. We're going to be fine. But you've got to identify and you got to address. Yeah. Glory to God. Praise God. I mean, and so he, he, Jesus, praise another, another thing we're supposed to get for them is that Jesus was in control of everything that was going on. Yeah. Mm. It wasn't like, oh, he betrayed me. Oh, this is oh, this is weird. Oh, it wasn't like he knew. He did. He knew when he was in your garden of Gethsemane, glory to God, he knew that it was coming. He said, Go ahead and get up and my betray they might come. They were still sleeping. He knew he was listen, he was walking in all of his authority, you know, right? And just yeah, at this time, like the word, he was a bad man. Yeah, God. Glory to God. And when they came to him, glory to God, he says, What are you here for? Glory to God. He said, you know, and they said, We're looking for Jesus. And he says, Are you are you him? He says, I am. I am. And it says they all fell back. <laughs> Jesus was a bad boy. Glory <laughs> to God. And then he stayed there. He didn't run. He said, Get up. Then you say, I'm coming here looking for him. Listen, he was in control. Anybody hear me today? My God. He was in control. Listen, they didn't take his life. He gave his life is what I'm trying to explain to you. Yeah, right. He was like a lamb being led to the storm. Right. He could have fought. The Bible says at one point, he said, I can call legions of angels. He says, you're only in charge. And then uh, because my father allowed me to be in charge, my Come on. Come on. Oh, God. But if I wanted to, I could call legions of angels. Okay. I told him, legions over 2,500 angels apiece. Glory to God. Glory to God. He could have shut it down. One angel was enough. Uh -huh. He said, I can call me. Please hear me. Please hear me. This is the God. This is Jesus. So, so he so he was letting everybody know. The worst kind of enemies are the ones who pretend to be your friends. Yes, yes. Uh, I missed that. The worst kind of enemies are the ones who pretend to be your friends. Glory to God. Amen. And, and so sometimes we just gotta we gotta level the playing field. Just be real. Be genuine with me. Either you're with me or you're against me. Yes, Judas betrayed Jesus. He was hating on Jesus. Glory to God. And he was an apostle. So he, was, he was on his way to being an apostle. He was a disciple of Jesus Christ. And guess what? We can't heal the culture if the church is sick. Yes, Lord. Why do you say, why are you spending time with us? Because we can't reach the community if we got issues in the church. Jesus was getting it right. Before he went to the cross, he didn't want to go to the cross without addressing Judas, without letting everyone, let the other 11 disciples know, we got a betrayer in the Listen, he was hating on Jesus. Glory to God. And so we got to identify our Judas. If you bowling, glory to God, if you have a bowling ball and we had all these pins, glory to God, it wouldn't make no good if I have a beautiful bowling ball in the most perfect form and I go down and I bowl the ball, but the pin's over there. Anybody here with y'all missing yes, that? Yes, yes. And we have to identify uh -huh. yeah, any obstacle. We have to identify our enemy. We have to identify our Jesus. Glory to God. So, 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 Jesus, Judas betrayed Jesus, and Jesus allowed him to do it. All right, I'm going to speak this up. Peter denied Jesus. Glory to God, and Jesus allowed him to do it. They mocked him. They arrested him. They beat him. They scourged him. They humiliated him. But Jesus allowed them to do it. Glory to God. And and even though he could have called these angels, he said from his own mouth, he didn't. He allowed them to do it. Which means what? That he was humble even yeah. to death. And the scripture says in the, in the Old Testament, the problem that humility comes before honor. Yes. yes. And like I said to you before, if Jesus had to be humble before he came to a position of honor, what makes you think that you don't have to go through your, right. your humble right. time? Amen. 
Some of you are ready to give up. Some of you crying and we whining and we want to pick part of that. Glory to God. God says, this is your humble season. Humility always comes before honor. Allow the process to go to its full end. Praise the Lord, baby. Glory to God. I got one amen in the front. Glory to God. Praise God. They scourged him. They humiliated him. Glory to God. And so watch this. In Matthew um, 27, Pilate is questioning Jesus, and Jesus didn't say too much. Take note, take note. Glory to God. Matthew 27, verse 11 to 14. It says, Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He says, You have said so, Jesus replied. When he, when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony that they're bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply. Not even to a single, not to a, a single charge to the great amazement of the governor. Jesus. Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And how many know that when you are walking in truth, praise God, you don't have to say too much. Amen. Glory to God. Jesus knew who he was. You know who talks too much? The person who is unsure about themselves. The insecure person always had too much to say. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. But when we know that we are in the will of God, how do we know that we just need to be quiet and let God fight our path? Yeah, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Be still. Yeah. That I am God. Yes. Yeah. Everything He did was the way He spoke. He was teaching us. Come on. He was silent. Yeah. The only thing He answered was according to His deity. But He said it so. Yeah. Yeah, my King, you, you said it. You said it, King. Yeah. You yeah. said it. Yeah. Praise God. Glory to God. And we need to learn from that. First Peter 3, 15, 17, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Verse 16 says, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you of your good conversation in Christ. For it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well doing than for evil doing. People won't talk about you, is what I'm saying. Amen. People won't put you down. People won't say the wrong thing about you. But all you need to know is that you are in right relationship with God. Yes. All you need to know is that you are walking and talking and you are standing in the righteousness of God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Righteousness means being in right standing, basically, with God. As long as you know you are in right standing with God, yes. let them talk. Let them talk. Praise God. Because they're going to talk about it. A lot of times, I want to tell you this, that that's a sign that you're doing the right thing. Amen. You know, a lot of people get so upset. Oh, Pastor, they say this. And it's never happened in my whole life. Listen, it just means you're doing the right thing, woman of God. Amen. It means you're, you're finally made the right decision, man of God. Praise God. Let them talk. Let them talk. Glory to God. And, it's, and, and, and guess what? You, you know that you mature when you don't answer the back. When I was living, they used to have to say, stick to the stones, may break your bones, but they will never hurt you. Now, we know that ain't true, because names can hurt, but they don't break your bones. Amen. Anybody here, somebody some of y'all used to say that, didn't y'all? Glory to God. Glory to God. But praise God, we don't have to answer back to everything that's being said. Amen. I'm saying that this is going to help you in your marriage if you get it. This will help you in your job if you get it. This will help you in, I don't care what it is, man, best friend, whoever the case is, you don't got to always have something to say back. Change your perspective. Let God fight your battle for you. Especially when you're doing the right thing. Especially when you are in right standing. Glory to God. When he was on his way to the cross, I mean, when he was on the cross, glory to God, I was speaking this up, glory to God. Hallelujah. Because now we see he got to the cross and we know the story, right? Glory to God. After he went through these things, glory to God, and, 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 and Pilate didn't see anything in him. Pilate didn't see any sin in them. Pilate tried to exonerate Jesus. Y'all know that? Yeah. Glory to God. Just like it said in the Old Testament that they was going to not find anything guilty about him, that he was going to be innocent. Pilate said, Why am I going to kill this man? Right. Amen. Glory to God. And we know the reason why. Glory to God. All right. And, and the high priest, glory to God, he basically put Jesus out there to suffer for all of the Jews. Glory to God, because he didn't want Rome coming against him. Glory to God. And so they tried to make Jesus the sacrifice for everyone. Glory to God, which Jesus really came to be sacrificed for the whole world. All right. Glory to God. And so Pilate said he didn't come. He didn't, I don't see any sin in him. And 
trying to get them off, and he put them out there, and they had keys and they had Barabbas. And he said, who do you want? I'm going to let one go. And then you would think that it would say, give us Jesus. But they didn't say, they said, give us Barabbas. But just a week before that, they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, Lord God, Jesus, save us. Yes, Lord. The kids was worshiping. The old folks was worshiping. The Bible says that if they didn't, even the stones would shout. They were, they were waving palms. They were putting stuff on the ground. They worshiped his royalty. King of kings. Lord of lords. Save us, Jesus. How many know it took less than seven days for them to say, crucify him? Yeah. Just like that. Please hear me. Oh my God. Please hear me. Yeah. That's why I teach us that we need to grow up. We need to mature. Yeah. A sign that you are truly walking with God yeah. is when you go through persecution. Yeah. It's when you have people yeah. glory to God, when you go and get strike, when people try to drag your name through the mud and all of this other yeah. stuff. Don't yeah. get upset. Go in the closet and say, God, I want to thank you. They yes. are finally arriving at the place where they are. He said, How can you stop? How can you uh how can you rejoice with me in in, 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 in Athens when you don't want to go through me, my persecution with me? Glory to God. We have to be able to go through some suffering. They talked about Jesus. They won't talk about you. Yeah. Hallelujah. They want to talk about you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we know the story, and they beat him. Glory to God. And they said they, they whipped him. He tried to he tried to get him off, and they scourged him. And it was a it was a demonic scourge. Glory to God. And they said they they, they beat him and they struck him. And, and they said they was mocking him. They said prophesy. They said prophesy. Rabboni, who hit you? They would hit him, and another person would hit him, and they couldn't see who hit you. Glory to God. They said they were striking him in the head. Glory to God with sticks. Glory to God. It's amazing that they beat him beyond recognition, but he, they still didn't break a bone. Why? Because it was prophesied. There's not one bone that he broke. This is Jesus that we're talking about here. They scourged him. At one point, they said they, they ripped him with cat and eye tail. Well, cat and eye tails is like bones. It's a shard and it's, and it's razor sharp. And when they whipped him, they would, it would go into his flesh and it would pull out flesh. Ah, Jesus. They would pull out the flesh. And he took it for you and for me. Glory to God. He is unique. All he had was you on his mind. All he had was me with his mind. Greater love is there not anywhere else than the person that's willing to give up their life for you. Don't tell me about Muhammad and all these different people. They didn't die for me. They didn't take any crucifixion for me. They didn't get whipped for me. Listen, why would, I don't even understand, why would anybody want to worship or follow anybody else? It doesn't make sense. It's not even intelligent. If we wrong, so what? Right? Because we can't be wrong. We're still doing the right thing. We're going to make it. But if they wrong, it's over for them. Everything that they do comes from us anyway. They made a Quran. It comes from the Holy Bible. They say the archangel Gabriel came and gave the man, and everything is in there is from the Bible, and they twist the stories. How can you? I don't understand the intelligence of people that will follow something like that. Glory to God. And so, watch this. They put him on the cross, they put the nails in his hands. Glory to God. And, and, and on Friday, before we get to seven last words, I'll let you hear what it sounds like. Nails going into the flesh. It don't sound nice, do it. And you hear poop, 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 and they're knocking the nails into his hands, glory to God, and they're knocking the nails into his, and it probably went through his hands, glory to God, because if it went through here, glory to God, it would have went through his body. The, the body's not strong enough to support it through the wrist. So the, like it says in the Bible, it literally, they nailed it through his hands. And we see Jesus on the cross, nails in his hands. Nails and his feet, and put his feet together, and they had a nail long enough to go through both of his hands. Please hear me. They don't do that no more, do they? Not only, not even ISIS and all of them are doing any crucifixion like that. The only time the crucifixion was around was the time, it was right before Jesus was born, or a little bit after. 
Jesus is the only person that could have fulfilled the mandate for being the Messiah. Uh, and he did that for you and he did that for me. Come on. Listen. Three nails and one cross equal forgiven. You say it again. Three nails plus one cross equal forgiven. Praise God. They used three nails and they put them on one cross. And because of that, now we can actually obtain forgiveness. Yes, Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believes in him should not perish but have what? Everlasting life. Everlasting life. But he had to give his son. They humiliated Jesus. You know, we all know the story. They say at one point while he was on the cross, they say they gave him a sponge full of vinegar. Yes, Lord. Y'all know that? Amen. Y'all know what really happened? The sponge that they're talking about during that time was the sponge that they would use in the outhouses. Mm -hmm. At that time, they would go and they would go urinate and defecate in the outhouses. Glory to God. And if the outhouses were good enough, which they would have been in Rome, in Jerusalem especially, they would use a sponge to wipe their butthole and then to wipe themselves. Glory to God. Glory to God. And so they mocked Jesus when he said, I'm thirsty! I'm thirsty. And he had to say it because it was in the scriptures. Yes, and what did they do? They put a sponge full of dutin, full of urine, full of feces. Glory to God. And they put it at his lips and they say, Here, you just drink this. Suck on this, Jesus. And Jesus says, It is finished. <laughs> it is finished. Ah. That's how bad they mocked him. Hallelujah. Not only did they humiliate him, they couldn't stand him. Satan was behind the crucifixion. It wasn't just any old we won't kill him. No. They wanted to humiliate him. My God. They had a foreign crown on his head, which said, King of the Jews. And they even even wanted that off. They the, the the what we would call Christians and they what they were like, take that off. Father, he said, Well, I have done I done. Because I believe that Jesus impressed them so much. Glory to God. And he knew he was something unique. His wife had had dreams and said, don't have anything to do with this man. Joanna was like, listen. My wife liked that part. Joanna, glory to God. Prophet of Joanna, glory to God, was like, listen. Don't have nothing to do with this man. He's like, why? Because I had a dream. He is who he says he is. Leave him alone. But Pilate still succumbed to the will of the people, which is a lesson. Don't allow anybody to make you miss that man. Listen to Joanna. <laughs> My wife said it's a lesson to listen to, to listen to his going. Go to God. Maybe that might be a problem. Go to God. But how do you know we don't want anybody? We should not allow anybody. Yes. Not allow anybody. Much love. Love my wife. Go to God. If she was to turn on God, turn on Jesus, I'd be like, it's all right, son. I'm sorry. But I got to um, <laughs> I got to go and go, go to God and do what I got to do. Praise God. Hallelujah. They were disrespectful to Jesus. Turn they said they were disrespectful. They were disrespectful to Jesus. <laughs> they said, here, drink on this piss. Suck on this. Disrespectful. We have so many proofs for the resurrection. So many proofs for the resurrection. I'm not going to go through all the because we did that. And man, praise God, and we know everything that he said. And I don't want to take the time. But we know what he did. He was suffering. Glory to God. Yes, God. The first thing he did, though, when he got on the cross, you know what he said? Father, forgive them. Yes. But they don't know what they're doing. I don't know about you, but if you put some piss in my mouth and some feces in my lips, I ain't praying, Father, forgive them. <laughs> Matter of fact, that would have been it for me. I'd have called those Jesus and I'd have jumped off the cross and it would have been over. We had to have a whole new Messiah, a new Bible, and Larry came off the cross and killed them all. Oh! Like that, like that. Oh! It would have been done. Lord, forgive me. But he didn't do it. I'm playing a little bit. Praise God. But think about it. I'm sorry. They messed him up, man of God. They tore him up. Lord God, they was really being disrespectful. And I'm fine with people. I don't like people disrespecting me. Praise God. Amen. Lord God. But he took it. He took it. He took it for you. And he took it for us. I got to keep saying that. It's why is this so important? Amen. This is Resurrection Sunday. 
We don't call it Easter because Easter it does come from a pagan name and it comes from a star and all of that. That's why we don't do Easter eggs. It has nothing to do with the Easter bunny. It don't have nothing to do with fertility God. It don't have nothing to do with that. It's Resurrection Sunday! Yes, God. The world act like we don't know that. We know that. That's why we don't call it Easter. We know that. Praise God. It is Resurrection Sunday. But there's so many proofs to the resurrection, which is why we celebrate it. First of all, we have to get the tomb. Yes. All right? And they try to say somebody stole the body, all right, or, or the woman went to the wrong tomb. But, but we know that that's not the case because the Jews and the Romans were so scared that they were hiding. That they didn't, they, didn't have the, they didn't have the guts to go up and be right in the garden and bring a little body. All right? And the woman, we know that they were at the right tomb because the scriptures tell us that they followed them to the sepulchre. They followed them. They followed them to the tomb. So they knew what Jesus was. They knew what Jesus was made. Yeah, yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Moving on. And then you have a, a woman that had the two-ton stone that not that not only had been rolled away, but the Bible teaches us that it was rolled up the hill. And it was away from the tomb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, come now on, on come on. Ton is, come on. Ton is 2,000 pounds. That's it. So two tons was 4,000 pounds. All right? And it said that the stone was rolled up heal and it was a way. Moving on. So it was not only as if somebody rolled the stone away, it was as if somebody picked up the stone and threw it. Come on. Come on. It was as if somebody picked up the stone and laid it somewhere else. Please hear me. It wasn't a, this wasn't a regular occurrence, praise God. And we know that it was the angels. Praise God famous in this thing. Praise God, oh Jesus of the Lord that happened. Praise God. But we know in one of the texts it says that the angel was sitting right there on the tomb and said, Who are you coming looking for? Who are you waiting for? Who are you looking for? We come looking for Jesus. We come looking for Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. All right. But the stone, praise God, glory to God, amen, was not only rolled away, it was carried away. And then not only was the stone, but they said that they had they had a, a, a they had a barrier on the stone. Praise God. They had um they, they, they had a seal on the, on the stone. Glory to God. That if the seal was broken, glory to God, it meant that was punishable by death. Right. So no one in their right mind. Amen. No one in their right mind. Glory to God. With dear, cut the seal. Come on. Come on. Because if it. it was found out, it's punishable by death. Who's here? Jesus. Come on. Glory to God. So we have an empty tomb. We have a, a, a 4,000 pound stone that was not rolled away, but it was thrown away. Praise God. We have the seal. Praise God. That was cut by somebody. Then we have the holy, the holy woman eyewitnesses. This is another reason why we know that the, the account of resurrection is true. Because the first person to see Jesus was woman. Mm. The three Marys was on their way. Glory to God to do their duty. This is for all people who think that woman is not supposed to be supposed to be in ministry. Glory to God. Why do you think God allowed the woman to see Jesus first? The men were scared. The men was depressed. The men was hiding in the house. Glory to God. They were giving up. They was the start the spurned it. Praise God. But the woman was on their duty. They were singing. Praise God. They said, We want to anoint. The body of yes, Jesus. Lord, yes, and the Bible says that when they got there, the stone had been rolled away. It was away. Praise God. And the angel said, who are you coming to look for, child? Praise God. Are we coming to look for Jesus? Praise God. And they said they saw somebody, and he says they thought he was the gardener. Jesus. How many know they didn't see wrong? Because Jesus is the great gardener. All right. Praise God. Praise God. When God created us, he put us in what? A garden. Because he loves the garden. Yeah. Praise God. Paradise. When he was on the cross, he told one of the thieves, he says, today you want to be with me in paradise. If you break that word down in the Greek, it means in the garden. Yeah. Uh, Glory to God. So when Jesus came back, when he had defeated death and all that kind of stuff, he came back and he was on the earth, he was the garden. They didn't see wrong. Glory to God. But evidently, his, his transfigured body, Glory to God, had a different visage than the one he was carrying around in his body. He was now king of kings. He was now Lord of lords. He was this. He was splendid and beautiful in his appearance. He looked different. And it wasn't until he said, Mary, that she said, Rabboni. Mm. Come on. Come on. 
Glory to God. He said, but don't touch me. She blew my voice. I had not yet ascended to my father. Uh, Jesus was something. Jesus is something. Amazing. All right. So then we have the apostles' new courage. Glory to God. Again, something must have happened to make them preach into their death. Glory to God. I'll give you all the reasons why we know this is real. Then number four, we have the large crowd of eyewitnesses. Praise God. And the conversion of Paul. The Bible says that 500 people saw Jesus at the same time. It's one thing if one person says, yeah, I think I saw Jesus. Oh, it's one people there. But 500 people? 500 people. Way more than the people that's in this church right now. Way more people that's probably even watching right now. They all saw Jesus at the same time. That pretty much solidifies, praise God, that someone saw Jesus. Yes. At the same time. I know everything that God does is strategic. Yes. Amen. First Corinthians 15, 6. For anybody who want to check me on my theology, it says, after that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remained until this present, but some are falling asleep. Meaning that when Paul wrote that, there were some people that were still living that saw Jesus. That was part of that 500. After that, he was seen of James, then of, then, then of all the apostles, and then, and, and last of all, he was seen by me also, also one that was born out of due time. Meaning the apostle Paul said, I seen Jesus too. Why is it so important that, that James saw Jesus? Because if you read anything, you learn that James, who was the brother of Jesus, the half-brother of Jesus, he did not believe in Jesus' ministry. He did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Did y'all know that? He did not believe. The only thing that made him believe was after Jesus resurrected from the dead. When Jesus showed up to James, he worshipped his brother. He worshipped him. And then James became pastor of the largest church of ancient Israel. He had the largest church in, in Jerusalem, of course, because he was the brother of Jesus. Glory to God. So now we get the book of James and we get all the powerful things, things that he wrote in the book of James. Glory to God. But he didn't believe. He thought his brother was a charlatan. His whole ministry. I know a lot of people don't know that. All right? And then and then, then, then fifth, they died for Jesus. That's how another reason that we know that something must have happened. A person ain't going to die for something that they don't think is true. Anybody hear me today? Yeah. If I'm going to die for you, if I'm going to die for a reason, it's going to be true. At least I'm going to think it's true. Yeah. So if something happened that they was, yeah. some of them got beheaded, some of them got, you know, uh, Peter got crucified upside down. You know, they all died except for, for, for John. Glory to God, they boiled him in oil. They couldn't kill him, so they exiled him to Patmos, and that's where you get God gave him Revelation, the book of Revelation. Glory to God. Amen? Praise God. But they all suffered for their belief in Jesus. Y'all hear with me today? Amen. Glory to God. All right. So we, to reiterate, the body of Jesus could not have been stolen. Five of the five hundred witnesses could not have the same hallucination. All right. Uh, they could not have gone to the wrong tomb. Glory to God. All right. And so we get all of these things to allow us to know, amen, that this, this occurrence, the resurrection is true. Glory to God. Now the resurrection, glory to God, we need to also understand uh, was the central message that was being preached in Jerusalem during that time. And when you look at the history of the church, you want to say, how did the church grow so fast? You know what they were preaching back then? They were preaching the resurrection. That's how the church grew. All of the people that saw Jesus, all of the people that heard his, his messages after death, that knew him when he was living and saw him after death, they were preaching that message. They wasn't preaching grace. They wasn't preaching prosperity. They wasn't preaching faith for material things, all right? Or they wasn't, they wasn't preaching about how to become a famous person, you know, how you hear preachers talking about all of that. Oh, God's gonna, all you gotta do is the God will make your name great and all of that. They weren't preaching nothing like that. All they were preaching was the resurrection. And that's why we need to preach about the resurrection more often. We need to know our stuff because people would be diverted if we can tell them, glory to God, how Jesus raised from the dead. It's the number one greatest miracle that has ever, ever, ever happened, amen, in the history of humanity. The disciples preached the resurrection. Not only did they preach the resurrection, but they preached it in the same city where he was crucified. Think about that. They preached it in the same city where they turned on the mountain. In the same city where all these events took place in Jerusalem, they preached it right there in the biggest church, which was pastored by James, was born right there. The church was born and grew rapidly out of Jerusalem. Um, so Orthodox Jews who believed in Christ, another thing that they did, 
They they made Sunday their day of worship. These are all things. Listen, you need to know why do we worship Jesus? Why are we talking about this resurrection with the world called Easter and all that? Listen, they change. That's this that's big, that's big stuff. All right, it's one of the Ten Commandments. Remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. Glory to God. The reason why we worship on Sunday is because on the first day of the week, the Bible says, right. Jesus got up. Yes, he, did. Yeah. He, he was crucified. Glory to God. They buried him in the tomb, but he didn't stay down. He got up. Yeah. On the first day of the week. The Bible says early in the morning, on the first day of the week, Jesus got up. Come on, teach Not it. Not only did he get up, but he got up with all power. In his hands, yes. He said, I have the power of life in me. Yeah, he took the keys from heaven. Hallelujah. He the keys from hell. He hallelujah. Now, he literally is, hallelujah, the king of peace and all the rules of everything, which he wasn't already before, but he came and he did it, and he went through the process for you and for me. Yeah. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The question is, now where did Jesus go for those three days when he was in the tomb? Anybody know? Where did he go when he was dead? Praise God. First Peter 3, 18, 19 says, For Christ also have once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. What spirits are they talking about? They're talking about the spirits that were in hell. That's it. So when Jesus went into the afterlife, he immediately broke into, praise God, amen, uh, what we call Hades or Sheol, or right, at the time or whatever, and he preached. You can translate that word to mean he proclaimed. Because okay. I, I always caution people, he didn't give people a second chance. Glory to God. Praise God. So how can you come unless there be a preacher? Wow. Which is why the devil wants to shut down churches all over the world. Because how can you be converted come on. unless there's a preacher? Yes. Hey, all the internet is all good and all that, but don't get it twisted. Praise God. The way that Christ instituted the church, glory to God, hallelujah, was people coming together, fellowshipping, corner me up, one another. One another with one another. Glory to God. Grace can be found. Amen. Love can be found. Hope can be found. Amen. When we come and join, amen, hands together. And so Jesus had to go there. He had to go to hell and proclaim. He made an open spectrum when he did out of here. Whatever he did, we want to find out when we get to heaven. I believe we're going to be able to put the, the DVD and to see what Jesus did when he went to hell. When he went to hell. He beat him up, whatever he did, kicked him in his head, whatever. Get out of here. Made him look small. And he preached. And everybody that was on his side, he says, Noah, all of everybody, amen, that you was able to reach Noah, I want you to come with me. Abraham, everybody that you was able to reach that followed Abraham, I want you to come with me. Moses, everybody that followed Moses, I want you to come with me. I am Jesus. I Some of them back with him yeah, to walk God. the earth. Yes, God. Listen, I done gave us so much. There's no reason for anybody to doubt. Yeah, that's it. That's it. There's no reason for you to be doubting your faith. Jesus. People come to me all the time and say, I'm not sure it's not, but I can spend the time with you. Listen, get back into your Bible. Go back to church. Everybody thinks, oh, I know it all. You don't know it all. Go back to church. Somebody who knows it, let them teach you. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. David had prophesied about his death. Mm. Isaiah had prophesied about his death. Mm. Look at the hundreds of years before. And then Peter preached about it. And the Bible says 3,000 people gave their life to Jesus Christ. But it was more than that. It was more than 3,000 people. It was probably about 9,000, 12,000 people because it wasn't counting the women and the children. 3,000 men. Ooh, I would love to have 3,000 men. If you get the thing that you all the family, you get everybody. Amen. It wasn't just woman. The Bible is clear. Men. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he did that. I might as well take the time to, 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 to read it. Read it in Acts chapter 2, verses 29 and 32 for those that are checking me. Glory to God. Praise God. Acts 2, 29 and 32. We see the discords of Peter. Praise God. Amen. And, and then, hallelujah. He, and he ended that. He said that 
after that Jesus was exalted, he was exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see in here. Jesus had to come and do everything that he did so that he could send the Holy Spirit. And now, not only are we here as believers, glory to God, but Jesus says, greater works shall we all do than even that of Jesus the Christ. How many know that we're supposed to be laying hands on the sick and we're supposed to recover? Yes, Lord. Anybody yes. hear me today? Hallelujah. So if you don't believe this, but Jesus said, greater works. Yes. You know, there are some people, we call them sensationalists, those are the ones that are theologians. Yes, Sensations don't believe in prophets anymore. They don't believe in apostles anymore. They don't believe in that. I said, well, Jesus said, greater works shall we do. And if you don't believe in prophets anymore, you don't believe in the prophets, you don't believe in all the things that you put out there, evangelism, all of that, then that means you believe that heaven don't exist, uh, hell don't exist anymore. All right. Yes, and that means you don't need preachers anymore because nobody's going to hell. But the devil is a liar Amen. because hell is still there. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that hell has enlarged itself. Yeah. All right. And that's why we got to still preach the word. And faith with power. Glory to God. John 15, 25 and 27. But this come up to pass that the word might be fulfilled as written in the law. They hated me without a cause. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth will proceed from the Father, he shall testify of me. You can tell somebody that the Holy Spirit because they're always talking about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And you shall also bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. He did all of this for you. And for me. Yes, God. Jesus said, John 14, 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Oh, God. That where I am, you may be also. It's not the end of the story, man, the woman of God. Glory to God. He's coming back. And there's mansions waiting for you in heaven. Glory to God. As long as we finish the fight. Yes, Lord. See, the race ain't given to the swift. I know you went to church when you were three, four, five years old. All right, you need to stay in church. You need to stay reading your Bible. You need to stay doing the right thing. Because the race ain't given to the swift, but to those who endure to the end. You got to, at the end of your life, that's when God's going to evaluate you. What good is it if me and my wife were married for 40 years? In 39 years, she never cheated on me, never did her. But that last year, she decided to be unfaithful. What good is it? Praise God. How many know there's still going to be a breakup that's going to happen? Praise God. In that 40th year, glory to God. You've got to finish yes. strong is what I'm saying. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. And that's why you got to stay strong. If you stay strong, like Sister Jackie always say, you'll last long. Amen. Praise God. Stay strong in your last week. That's why we come and we hear the word of God. Because the Bible says faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Praise God. If you ain't listening to this, you're listening to something else. Praise God, and you're getting your you're, you're getting your cues, amen, from another word, from another Bible, so to speak. Praise God. We don't worship a dead Savior, we worship a risen Savior. Jesus ascended into heaven in front of thousands of people. And that's not all because in Ephesians 4 8, it says that when he ascended on high, he took many captives. Meaning that everybody that he preached to, that he proclaimed to in hell, he took them with him. If I had a billion dollars to make a movie about Jesus, it would blow people's minds. Yes. Not only did he raise, I mean, he go to heaven, I believe thousands of other people that he had preached to all went to heaven with him. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Hey. Did you see that? That's why they had to change time for this guy. Uh, <laughs> We're going to start this thing all over. Zero AD, I mean, three AD. Praise God. We're going to go from here. We got to go from here. He said he's coming back, child. Let's change time. He's going to patch it. Not just in Jerusalem, all over the world. That blows my mind. That blows my mind. That blows my mind. I'm done. I got to finish it. I got to be done for the day. Hallelujah. The time is far spent. But please remember everything that we talked about today. The person. The work in the life of Jesus Christ, they all stand as irrefutable evidence against the secular worldview and all the religions of the world, regardless of their maker. No one else is qualified or capable to meet the needs of fallen humanity or restore that which was lost by Adam and the fallen man. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And so, because we worship the God man, the Savior, Jesus, the lion who is also the lamb, we have to remember that only he alone is able to come to what no one else in the universe can. Yes, God. And based on his death as the lamb, his resurrection as the redeemer and savior, he has become it. What was lost through the judgment of the silver. So I want to implore somebody today, if you have not given your life to Jesus, give your life to Jesus. Hallelujah. We're not preaching for our own good. We're not preaching to feel good about ourselves. We're preaching so that the kingdom can be expanded. His name is Jesus. And the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead, you shall be saved. Not only did he raise and resurrect, but we God, you will resurrect if we're still alive when he comes back for that second coming. Hallelujah. If we close our eyes in this dispensation and then before he returns, praise the Lord, glory to God. The Bible says that when we open up our eyes, we're going to open up our eyes in heaven. Hallelujah. 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 With our streets of gold. Hallelujah. Where there's no more sickness, there's no more dying, there's no more listen. Praise God. There's no more lying. Praise God. Praise God. Anybody here with me today? Praise God. Hallelujah. Sin doesn't have a minimum wage. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. Yes, Lord. The gift of God is eternal life. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage somebody, whether you're in here or you're watching, stop sinning. Give your life to Jesus. Hallelujah. And start a new life with him. Sin doesn't have a minimum wage. I don't care what your sin is. If you die in that state, man of God or woman of God, heaven will not be your home. Hallelujah. I gave you our message last week and I talked about the seven signs of written in John. The eighth sign was the resurrection. Eight means the biblical morality, new beginning. So the eighth sign of Jesus resurrected from the cross, resurrected from the grave, I should say, praise God, was allowing us to know that we have a new beginning. We can have a new start with him. That we have new life with him. If you want to give your life to Jesus, I want to invite you to come now. His resurrection is going to have to shut it down. I know we're going to go to restaurants and we're going to have a good time. But if you had never given your life, go to God, I want to invite you to come now. Or maybe you used to be saved, go to God, amen, but you have taken the long term. Glory to God and give straight away from God. Praise God. You haven't been in church in 20 years. Praise God. You haven't done the right thing. You have not talked about God. You have not witnessed. You have not no, nothing. Praise God. And now you want to just rededicate yourself. You want to rededicate yourself? I want to invite you to come today. Everything we just talked about for the hour that we just had to spend together. Praise God. Glory to God. He did it for you and he did it for me. If we were to die tonight, glory to God, we want to be in right standing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That I believe that we are all men and women of God. And let's give God a hand clap for that. For all praise. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you're watching, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you want to be a part of our family, if you want to be a part of what we call the kingdom, glory to God. Hallelujah. All you have to do is say your prayers. Praise God. All you have to do is receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. And then forsake everyone else, go to God. And the Bible says, you shall be saved. And I want to walk you through a prayer, sir, man, go to God. I want you to pray with me. Father God, it's me, your child. Lord God, forgive me for all of my sin. Known and unknown. Lord, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and personal Savior. I choose life. I reject death. I choose heaven, I reject hell. Please write my name in the Lamb book of life with the blood of Jesus. Thank you for your grace of being able to say this prayer on today. I love you, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Love you, God. Come on, let's get back right there. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, sir, man. This is your first time saying it. Congratulations. Welcome. Glory to God. Amen to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the angels rejoice over one sinner that give their life to Christ. Now what you want to do is find a Bible teaching, a Bible believing church. Get in there and allow yourself to
Harvest House Restoration Center. Senior Pastor Reverend Dr. Larry Burchett Jr. Co-Pastor Reverend Dr. Joanna Burchett. A prolific couple on fire for God in the Carlisle, Pennsylvania area. 405 North East Street, Carlisle, Pennsylvania, 17013. Come on out and join this wonderful church. Sunday mornings, 10 a.m., Tuesday evenings, 7 p.m. You will not be disappointed.